Hi everyone, this is Vitamins Part 1. Uh, in Vitamins Part 1, I will tell you about fat-soluble vitamins. Part 2 will discuss about water-soluble vitamins. In fat-soluble vitamins, as you all know, I will be discussing about vitamin A, D, E and K. To begin with, what are the differences between fat-soluble vitamins and water-soluble vitamins? As fat-soluble vitamins are non-polar, their absorption is dependent on fat absorption. So, if there is any clinical condition which is resulting in fat malabsorption or seatoria, that can result in vitamin A, D, E and K deficiencies. That is point number one. And point number two is, they can be stored. All fat-soluble vitamins can be stored in liver and in adipose tissue. Because they can be stored, all these deficiencies, vitamin A, D, E, K deficiencies are not as common as what you would observe for water-soluble vitamins. That is point number two. And because they can be stored, toxic manifestations are common in fat-soluble vitamins. So, these are the three basic facts that you have to remember. Now, about vitamin A, what are the three forms of vitamin A? The first one is the alcohol form, which is retinol. And the second one is the aldehyde form, which is retinal. And the third one is the acid form, which is retinoic acid. And what is the significance of the first alcohol retinol? This is the form in which your vitamin A is absorbed, transported and stored. And this was asked once in NEET PG, the form of vitamin A which is stored is retinyl esters or retinol alcohol. Now, retinal, in the name do you see retina? The name you see retina, right? So, that's a clue that is given to you. This is the form that is present in the eye. It is present in rods and cones because what is rhodopsin? Rhodopsin, until it is stimulated by light. Please remember, this is essential for you to understand Wall's visual psyche. So, rhodopsin, until it is stimulated by light, is Levensis retinal in the center plus opsin. Okay, then light falls on retina, Levensis retinal becomes all trans retinal. That is different. So, until it is stimulated by light, your rhodopsin is Levensis retinal in the center surrounded by opsin. So, that is the significance of the aldehyde form retinal. About retinoic acid, there are two forms of retinoic acid. One is all trans retinoic acid. The other one is 13 cis retinoic acid. All trans retinoic acid suppresses, supports, all trans retinoic acid supports growth and multiplication of epithelium. There is 13 cis retinoic acid, interestingly, suppresses keratinization of epithelium. And that is why what do you expect in vitamin A deficiency? When there is no 13 cis retinoic acid, there is no suppression of keratinization. So, you observe follicular hyperkeratosis or phrenoderma. Yeah, this was also asked in NEET PG. Phrenoderma picture was given and it is caused by deficiency of which vitamin? Your answer should be vitamin A. What is phrenoderma? It is follicular hyperkeratosis, which is caused by 13 cis retinoic acid deficiency, wherein there is excessive keratinization. For the same reason, in vitamin A deficiency, when the conjunctival epithelium undergoes keratinization, conjunctiva is dry and that causes xerosis. And keratin debris of conjunctiva is the reason for bite hot spots. Along with this, you should also remember that 13 cis retinoic acid is capable of stimulating apoptosis of sebaceous glands and it also stimulates N-gal production. And that is why it can be used for treating resistant acne. And because it suppresses keratinization of epithelium, any hyperkeratotic condition, for example, harlequin ichthyosis, yeah, harlequin ichthyosis can be treated using retinoic acid. Okay, so that's about the three forms of vitamin A. Summary is transport, storage, it's all alcohol, right? It's all alcohol, retinol. I, it is retinal aldehyde form. Epithelium related manifestations and functions are carried out by retinoic acid. Okay. So, now let's try to understand about Wall's visual cycle because that is something which is very essential as far as vitamin A is concerned. So, what is Wall's visual cycle? This begins with what happens when light falls on retina. Can anybody tell me what happens when light falls on retina? As I told you, until 
it is stimulated by light your rhodopsin is 11 cis retinal in the center surrounded by opsin when light falls on retina there is photo isomerization of 11 cis retinal to form all trans retinal and this all trans retinal will get detached from opsin this detachment is called as photo bleaching so what happens when light falls on retina photo bleaching or conversion of 11 cis retinal to all trans retinal happens and Wall's visual cycle is all about how do we regenerate rhodopsin so that it's ready to accept the next photon. Do you understand? It's all about regenerating rhodopsin after photo bleaching so that it's ready to accept another photon. Okay. And this Wall's visual cycle involves two cells in the eye. One is retinal pigment epithelium, the other one is rods. Ultimately, only these, these two cells, retinal pigment epithelium and rod cells. And to understand Wall's visual cycle, there are three facts that you should remember. Okay. The first fact just now I told you, rhodopsin is 11 cis retinal in the center. Right. Rhodopsin is 11 cis retinal in the center. But what is the form in which vitamin A is transported? It is transported as all trans retinol. It is transported as all trans retinol. So what you are supposed to do is, you should convert this all trans retinol to Levens's retinal only then you can regenerate rhodopsin and for this your retinal pigment epithelium helps how does it help because it has got three enzymes so what are the three enzymes present in retinal pigment epithelium the first one is l rat have you heard of l cat you have heard of l cat right what is l cat lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase so, what is LRAT? It is the same, lecithin retinol acyl transferase. So, what do you think LRAT does? It transfers fatty acid from lecithin to retinol. What will happen when retinol gets attached to fatty acid? It becomes retinyl ester. So, the function of LRAT is to form retinyl ester. The second enzyme is RPE65. Yeah, the second enzyme is RPE65 which is nothing but isomerohydrolase and as the name indicates what do you think this enzyme does the enzyme simultaneously hydrolyzes and isomerizes okay that's the function of rpe65 the last enzyme is levenses retinol dehydrogenase so have you memorized this list only if you know this list you will understand Wall's visual cycle. So, what are the three enzymes present in retinal pigment epithelium? The first one is LRAT, which is lecithin retinol acyl transferase. The second one is RPE65, which is isomerohydrolase. And the last one is Levensis retinol dehydrogenase. Okay. So, now I'm going to draw Wall's visual cycle so that you understand it clearly. I'm going to first draw two cells. What are the two cells? The first cell is Retinal pigment epithelium, RPE, that is one. The next one is rod cells. Okay, so this is rod. So, from where do you begin? You begin from your pigment epithelium accepting the form of vitamin A. Which form of vitamin A does it accept? It accepts all trans retinol. Didn't I tell you? That is the form in which vitamin A is transported. The alcohol form is accepted by pigment epithelium. And the first enzyme to act on it, what is the enzyme I told you? The first one is LRAT. What does LRAT do? It transfers fatty acid to all trans retinol. Once it is transport, transferred to all trans retinol, it becomes ester. So now it is called as all trans retinyl ester. And what is the second enzyme that is present in pigment epithelium? The second enzyme is RPE65. What is the other name for RPE65? It is also called as isomerohydrolase. So, simultaneously it hydrolyzes the ester and isomerizes. When it isomerizes, all trans retinol becomes Levensis retinol. So, successfully you have formed Levensis retinol in the pigment epithelium. But still it is alcohol, right? Still it is alcohol. But what do you want? Aldehyde form to go and get inserted into rhodopsin. So to convert this alcohol to aldehyde, you are going to use the alcohol dehydrogenase. Which alcohol dehydrogenase I told you? It is Levensis retinol dehydrogenase. 
So the next enzyme is Levens is retinol dehydrogenase. So have you understood the significance of all the three enzymes? So these three enzymes together will finally synthesize Levens is retinol. And this is what your rhodopsin was waiting for so long. Yeah, I've synthesized Levens is retinol. This is what your rhodopsin was waiting for so long. So this Levens is retinol moves from retinal pigment epithelium, goes to rod cell. In the rod cell, it goes and gets incorporated into rhodopsin. So now it is Levens is retinol plus opsin, which we call as rhodopsin. Yeah, which we call as rhodopsin. Now what happens when light falls on retina? Light crosses all these layers, it goes and strikes rhodopsin. What will you get? When it strikes rhodopsin, now the Levens is retinol in the center gets converted to all trans retinol. What you have formed is all trans retinol. In retinal pigment epithelium, you have Levens is retinol dehydrogenase, whereas in rod, you have all trans retinol dehydrogenase. So that dehydrogenase converts all trans retinol into all trans retinol. And this is the form in which it is transported in circulation. So this comes out of rod and it reaches the circulation. Okay, so this completes Wall's visual cycle. Have you understood this? So what is about Wall's visual cycle? It tells you how do you generate rhodopsin and how do you regenerate rhodopsin. How do you generate rhodopsin? Generation is you start from all trans retinol which is taken up from the circulation by retinal pigment epithelium. The first enzyme is LRAT which converts it into retinyl ester. Then it is isomerohydrolase which converts a retinyl ester to Levens is retin uh, retinol. Levens is retinol becomes Levens is retinal with the help of alcohol dehydrogenase. That goes to rod, it goes and gets incorporated into opsin forming rhodopsin. When light falls on retina, Levens is retinal now becomes all trans retinal. All trans retinal in the presence of dehydrogenase becomes all trans retinol that reaches circulation. Okay, so once the photo bleaching has happened, once rhodopsin has been bleached by the light, how do you regenerate rhodopsin? That can be done in two ways, right? One way is you, are, you have already Levens's retinal which is synthesized by retinal pigment epithelium which can go and quickly get incorporated into the opsin. But for that, there should be adequate vitamin A in the system, right? Otherwise, what should you do? It should be recycled. If there is adequate vitamin, already the retinal pigment epithelium will be ready with one all trans retinal, which goes and gets incorporated. Whereas if there is not adequate vitamin A, then this uh, all trans retinal should be recycled back. That will take a longer time. And that is the reason for delayed dark adaptation time that is seen in vitamin A deficiency. So this is about Wall's visual cycle. This is about vitamin A. I hope it's clear.